Hello, it's Tony McMahon from When You Die, and this is a vlog series that's really intended to give you very personalised information and experience from me, somebody who has gone through the whole process of watching loved ones uh, basically becoming ill, dying, die, and then what happens after that. And I've just been unable uh, during that process to find what I regarded as really good quality information and just shared experience from people who've gone through the same thing. So I hope that this series gives you information that you'll find useful. Now what I wanted to talk to you to, about today is sheltered accommodation and why I think it's a good idea to encourage your loved ones to consider this option maybe a little earlier than they might otherwise choose to. Now why would I say that? I think a lot of people a lot of old people who are beginning to become disabled uh, mentally, physically, who are finding it hard to cope, they want to stay in the family home for as long as possible. You know, they've got an emotional bond to that place. Uh, they stay there, they may try and rely on home care provided by the local authority and so on. But I'll tell you, um, as sure as eggs is eggs, they will start having problems. Um, going out to shop for food and drink becomes a harrowing experience. Uh, even being on their own in the property presents security issues. Um, and then most commonly of all, they start having falls, particularly if there are stairs in the property, uh, stairs up to the first floor, to the bedroom, maybe to a cellar, maybe to an attic. You know, it all presents problems. And even with a fall alarm, of course, uh, it's still can be extremely dangerous, extremely risky for that person. And there's also issues around loneliness. Uh, they can be on their own in the family home, they're widowed, um, there's a lot of grieving still going on, a lot of memories around them. They're not making new friends, they're not socialising, they're not staying active. Well, I think that's all the reasons that you need to look into sheltered accommodation, because I think it, it spooks people sometimes, this whole issue of sheltered accommodation, because they confuse it with care home accommodation. And in fact, with sheltered, you have your own living quarters, you may have uh, a one, two or three room um, flat as such, it's locked, it's your accommodation, though it is cleaned and there is a laundry service and so on, which makes life a whole lot easier for you. And then there are communal areas where you can go to eat with other people, make new friends. But if you want, you don't have to go to those communal areas. You can hole up in your room. You also have the freedom to come and go out of the building as you please. But I think it's, it's a controlled environment where people can keep an eye on you. The warden can keep an eye on you just to see uh, that you're staying healthy, uh, that if you do have a fall, it's seen, it's taken care of but it's a good halfway house between living in the family home and, to be honest, preparing for the care home ahead. And sheltered accommodation is often owned by the same provider as a care home, so that uh, when the time comes to transition from sheltered accommodation to a care home, uh, you're not on a waiting list, you can just do it. Uh, in one case, there was one provider I went to, the sheltered accommodation was on one side of a, a nice patch of green, the care home was on the other. When the residents had to transition, they literally walked across to their new room in the care home. Um, but I think that the key thing about sheltered accommodation is it gets your loved ones into a new environment, it gets them to mix with people, it means that they still have a degree of liberty, it's actually not as expensive as you might think. In fact, in my case, I think sheltered accommodation was about a tenth of the price care home accommodation. Now, unfortunately, in the case of my father, for example, we left it too late. By the time that we went to a sheltered home provider, a couple of them, to um, put him forward uh, to have his own accommodation, they looked at the family doctor's records there was the records of falls that he'd had at home. Once they've had falls and it's in their medical records, sheltered home providers just go, no, no thank you, you're a risk to us, you have to go straight to care home. And that's what happened to my father. And of course, we then ended up paying £1,500 a week. So in my experience, I think it would have been better for him 
uh, on many levels to have gone into sheltered accommodation where he probably wouldn't have had those falls because they were on the stairs in the house. Um, his, um, you know, he could have been monitored more closely and I think he'd have been able to socialise with people whereas he was on his own, he was getting depressed after my mother died uh, in the family home. So I think the best thing to do is take your loved ones to go and see some sheltered accommodation. It can be of surprisingly good quality these days. I'd almost say it looks like a four-star hotel. Look at the quality of the living areas, look at the outdoor space, talk to the staff, just gauge whether or not they've got the right attitude. Obviously look at the cost, the area, and then take a view. But I really do think sheltered accommodation is worth considering earlier rather than leaving it to later when your loved one may no longer be eligible for sheltered accommodation. Until next time, thanks for watching.